This broadcast is brought to you by StudyEffectivelyPodcast.com, helping you achieve your academic goals one study tip at a time. Hello and welcome to the Study Effectively Podcast episode number two. So today we have a question from Tani and this is all about procrastination. So I'm going to let the question play and let's see how we can help out. <laughs> is this working? I think it is. Okay. Hey Jamie, I'm Tony, an IB student in my final year and a big fan of your videos. So, I'm facing a lot of pressure right now as my exams, the combination of two years work, are in five weeks, but I get to go on study leave next week. And if you've been doing your maths, you'll see that this means I have about a month. But here I have a confession. I find it really easy to procrastinate. So, here is my question. Do you have any tips for being productive and staying focused during study leave? Thank you very much for your question, Tony. Um, we have all been there, I'm sure. I have definitely been there when I know that I've got something incredibly important that I need to get done, but I just keep putting it off. And um, I have done a few things to try and help me overcome procrastinating. Uh, those of you who are unfamiliar with procrastinating, that is just putting off something that needs to be done with other tasks. So instead of, say... Um, getting on with the essay that you need to write, uh, you decide to count up how many pennies you have in your little piggy jar, um, which obviously is not as productive. Now, so I have a PPE background, so we actually come across this within economics, and it's something called hyperbolic discounting. Now, that's a fancy word. I'm There's a great example, and I'll add down a link that explains this fantastically as to why it is that we procrastinate, and it's all to do with our desire for gratification right now as opposed to deferring it until later. So say if I were to give you £100 uh, today, um, or if you wait a month, I will give you £100 in one month and one day. So you just have to add on one month and I'll give you, in fact, no, let's increase it. Let's make it £110. In a survey conducted that researched into this, um, everyone would prefer the £100 right now. However, if I were to, say, give you £100 um, in a year versus giving it to you £110 in a year and a month, you would be far more inclined to pick the later option. At least that's what the survey suggested. And this is because we're very bad at measuring the worth of a reward that isn't happening as close in time as one that is happening um, far sooner. Um, so with procrastination, it might not be completely clear the reward of you actually studying very, very hard for the test now um, until it becomes very, very apparent that the test is the next day and you really don't want to fail. Um, there's also this great book called The Trimp Par Chimp Paradox, um, which is a program to help you overcome this little voice in your head that tells you to go into Facebook or play video games or um, watch YouTube videos or uh, gossip with your friends to get these instant little bits of reward. Um, he actually gave a talk when I was working at Google um, and I read his book and there are quite a few good nuggets in there as to how to overcome procrastination and motivate yourself. Um, however, I'll add that to the show notes and I will now directly address your question. Um, so when I was revising for my Oxford University finals, it's essentially one very, very long opportunity um, to procrastinate because we get study leave from January um, and the exams for us were starting late May, early June. So it's completely down to us to figure out how do we structure our day and not waste that time. So I highly recommend this first tip which is to add structure to your day. Try and have a schedule that you stick to Monday to Friday. You can have the weekends off. Um, and when we're at school, we are easily we can easily do nine to three. And we started doing that when we were like five years old or seven if you're from some European countries in the world like Poland or Estonia. Um, so you can easily aim from nine to three and include a lunch break within that. So maybe start there as a foundation. The other key thing to this is to have other people hold you 
accountable to this daily structure. So for me, I would get into the library at 8 a.m. and I would always be the first person everyone would see in the library when they would enter. And if I wasn't there, my other friends would sit on my table and I know that they'd be thinking, hey, where is Jamie? And I just had this inkling in the back of my head that I didn't want to be... I know they weren't judging me, but there was always this this inkling feeling in my back of my head that I knew that they would be there and I wouldn't be and I'd be letting down the team. And when I was studying, we had this amazing table. I had one of my friends opposite me and then next sitting at the herd and one of my best friends to my left as well. And we were a really solid table and we had this amazing structure of getting into the library early and then doing all of our work. And this is the next part, structuring in breaks. And if you don't have a group of people that can hold you accountable, um, say a group of friends that you can study with, even if you're studying in your house, you have your family around you, or maybe you're living with friends there, and they will be able to see you working incredibly hard. For instance, when I was studying at home during the vacations, um, my family would know that I'd be up and I'd be studying at 9am, and they'd know that if I wasn't, they'd be like, oh, Jamie, how much work have you done? And I would feel slightly guilty. Again, I feel as though I'd letting, letting them team down um, and not putting in as much work as I can. So that's my first recommendation. Have a structure to your day, a clear schedule, so you know exactly when you have to work and when you can relax. And that's also key. And that moves me on to the next part of my recommendation for how you can overcome procrastination. And that's sh- schedule fun into your day. So I would get into the library at 8am and I knew that at 12pm lunch was being served in the hall and I would have my lunch break then until 1pm and if we were able to eat our lunch pretty quickly we would pop over to the common room and play on the PlayStation 4 Um, and then we would also, if the day was very very sunny after this lunch break, we would pop out at say 4pm and grab an ice cream. And then it was dinner at 6 p.m., which was absolutely fantastic. And then after dinner, we would typically wrap up the day. Um, And then that was it. We managed to get in some really solid hours of work with a huge amount of productivity built into it. Because we know that when we were working, we needed to work because we had something to look forward to. So we didn't have to dot the day with aimlessly going through our Facebook newsfeed or thinking what are other friends doing we're missing out on all of this great fun that we could be having because we could see that our friends were working when we were working and they were playing when we were playing because we're all there together now I would also recommend taking this down to another level so you've got your day structure you've got your friends who are you're working with or your family that are holding you accountable by uh, passively just keeping a small eye on you. And then you've also factored in the lunch breaks um, and your dinner breaks and the fact that you know when your day ends so you can relax after that. So you have all those things to look forward to. And another way then to make this even better, to factor in this gratitude that seems to be far more tangible than just the great result that you'll hopefully get when you get your exams back, is to work in bursts. I am a huge advocate of working in bursts. I mention it in so many videos. And the great thing about this is, you know that if you put a timer on for 20 minutes, you have only 20 minutes to work. And you can have a five minute break after that, which means that you can reward yourself out of that five minute break. Um, Some people might want to put social media, like, trolling through, um, say, Twitter um, during this break. Um, And I started off doing that uh, when I was phasing myself off of this, uh, off of being on social media all the time. And what I discovered was that after those 20 minutes, there was nothing would have happened. Um, And so I decided to pick another reward, like listening to my favorite song or gazing out the window or stretching or eating a piece of fruit. And eventually your attitude begins to shift. When you're working, you're thinking to yourself, oh, that's fantastic. Look at all of the work that I'm getting done. I'm so productive. Or, oh, this book I'm reading is amazingly interesting. Or, oh, I was just getting into that poem. Why does my timer have to end? And your whole mentality begins to shift, which means that the room that you leave open in your life to procrastinate has just got even smaller 
because not only are you you structured your day and you know when your breaks are you're also more into the work that you're actually performing because you're making it a scarce resource by putting it into bursts and that also means that you're able to maintain your concentration for longer some people may be listening to this piece of advice and thinking there are far too many breaks in this day you're working in 20 minute bursts you've got all those five minute breaks then you've got this lunch break you've also got this additional break later on maybe through the midday depending on how exactly you schedule your day 9 till 3 or maybe 9 till 12 or maybe 8 a.m till 9 p.m um and maybe those hours aren't too long are not long enough for you to believe that you're going to be getting the most from them but if you try it out you'll find that during this time you're far more productive and something that most people don't fully appreciate is that those little breaks, those rest periods, are actually helping you learn. Because when you're relaxed, your brain goes into its diffuse mode, which means that you aren't obsessing about trying to get in as much knowledge in your mind as possible. You're relaxing and you're letting that knowledge that you just accumulated tumble around in your mind and piece itself together. And uh, this is also why sleep is incredibly important, because that's when our brains go through all the information that we learn that day and prioritize things. So those little breaks, those little bits of fun that we factor in within the day, allow you to keep up your motivation and overall help you learn the material that you want to learn. Along with when you sleep and getting enough rest, you're also helping yourself learn. So Tony, I hope that that was helpful in helping you overcome your procrastination. Um, sticking to this kind of structure for my day meant that I was able to overcome a five month study leave and feel as though I was getting a lot out of every single session of studying that I did um, which meant that that effort was reflected in my overall exam results which the the huge satisf satisfaction that you get from knowing that you've worked hard and that you've been rewarded uh, it's an incredible feeling. I've been reflecting on it recently because my friends are currently wrapping up their fourth year exams um, and uh, one of my friends finishes on the same day that I finished my exams a year ago on the 11th of June 2014. Um, so I'm slowly getting some cool flash flashbacks to them. So thank you very much for your question. Um, do tweet us on Twitter if anyone else would like to add their tips to how to overcome procrastination. The Twitter handle is at an odd education and use the hashtag SEP002. That's for study effectively podcast. And this is obviously the second of these podcasts. And you can join the discussion with us there. Um, as always, to end this podcast on a quote um, in the theme of overcoming procrastination, um, this is something that really helped balance me um for when i maybe wasn't focusing as much when i should be when i um said i would be working or when eventually if you become a bit of a workaholic to help balance you to enjoy the company of your friends or to make sure that you are actually getting a high quality and a sufficient amount of sleep every single night um so i hope everyone who's listening to this also finds this useful the quote is when we work we work and when we rest we rest. That quote comes from a book called Angry White Pajamas, which is about an Oxford poet who does the right police course in Aikido um, in Tokyo, Japan. Sounds like a crazy story. Um, that we'll have to get into at another point um, because that's all for this podcast. Thank you very much for listening and see you later. Bye. Well, it's been splendid having you. Do come again soon to continue your odd education.